Welcome back to another LFG outdoor episode, folks. Lake Fort guy, that is me doing outdoor things, fishing, hunting, surviving, sometimes thriving in the great outdoors. And today we got a special episode. Look, look, look what's on the truck right over there. That is a kayak. I have yet to have this tandem combo where I'm gonna be taking the kayak out and we're going to be catching our fish. I'm gonna give myself a challenge. We gotta survive on fish for the next 24 hours. It is noon right now, so we're gonna to head to the lake. Uh, we got a camping spot set up close to the water and we're going to get the kayak out and try any means necessary to get a fish to eat. Another reason I'm taking the camper is I'm prepping it, I'm priming it. I'm greasing the skids for Colorado. We wanna make sure everything's smooth, working, now I actually have not fired up this camper since I installed the lithium batteries. I installed the Pro Guide lithiums, three of them, and we are about to find out how much juice is in here after sitting for months. So this is the big difference in lithium and AGMs. You go back to uh, AGM or regular just lead acid battery after a few months not charging it, it's probably not gonna be that good. But lithium, I'm hoping for like 90%. If we have 90% power, I'll be very impressed. Let's open it up. Now last time I set everything up, I installed a master power switch, which is awesome. I even did labelings because I knew I would come back to this in a few months and forget some things. So everything is nicely labeled. Master power, cutting on. Wa-bam. So to get an accurate reading on our power, we're actually gonna look at the Victron app. I installed a Victron power monitor in here for the solar and the, the batteries. We have a smart shunt. State of charge, 97%, guys. So it was 100% when I put it away, 97%, that is amazing. So I've actually got a separate switch installed for the solar panels. Let's pop these babies on, wah-bam. Where are we going? We got two watts, 29 watts, 37 watts. There we go, 42. We got an overcast day, so we're probably not gonna be slamming in the wattage. But hey, everything is working. We'll probably get back to 100% while we're driving. We got half tanks on both. Fantastic. Black tank for poopies. We're empty, that's great. I'm excited, I did all this work back in the spring when it was cooler inside of the camper, so I could avoid not having to do it at this time of year. Now we're getting into camping season. So let's head out to the water and uh, let's see if everything's working. Give her a dangle. Hopefully we're gonna get some fish. Use our outdoor kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna use our outdoor kitchen to cook it up. this out guys there is the water yeah buddy so this is gonna be camp for tonight you guys I got good sun exposure right here for the solar panels but I got electrical hookups turn on that AC which is very important right now if you know how hot it has been in Texas gonna be a slight challenge getting the kayak down to the lake with the lake being so low but I think I can do it. I got tons of poles. So I got a good dangling setup. Now, part of this challenge is going to be eating what I catch. While I'm kayak camping here on the lake, I gotta eat what I catch. And I'm gonna show you guys what I've brought in the fridge, which isn't very much. Oh my gosh, it's hotter than Satan's tain out here. So we got the fridge running. I'm gonna show you guys what I have. Let you know I'm not, I'm not cheating out here. So, nothing in that side. And here, I know I do have some butter. We're gonna be cooking with that. We have some rice for our fish. I did bring a thing of pickles, just to add a little something to our meal. Got some vitamins, brought some AG1. Some fresh okra from the garden. Pick that right before we left. So that's gonna be going with our fish. And I did bring 
a local selection of Dallas Blondes. Gotta have some cold pops. So the goal is to catch fish, eat them in this 24 hour period as our food using the kayak. We're gonna have to get that down. That'll be something. So let's get the camper popped up. Let's see if everything's working. Fingers crossed that AC is gonna be nice and cool. That one's gonna be tough to get to. Okay, moment of truth. AC. Is our AC going to turn on? I really didn't get this camper to plug in at places and use, you know, the 30 amp power, but in this instance, I got to have it. Got to have it. I don't even know how to turn this on. Not so much. We'll see how it does in like 10 minutes. That's gonna be brutal if that doesn't work. You guys probably can't see it all the way out there, but I see a school of white bass coming up and busting already at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. That is our dinner, folks. If I can launch this kayak and get down in here, I've, I've even got a battery for the electronics. I can find them. I got spoons. I can get them. I got crate baits. I got top waters. AC's in there starting to cool down. It's not very effective, but I don't really expect it to be. It's, you know, a soft top, which I love. You get all the sounds of nature. I'm gonna be able to sleep with the sounds of the waves coming in tonight. It's gonna be great. So excited right now. Okay, this is gonna be challenging. LFD, help me load this up here. It's been a while since I've done it by myself. We're gonna to have to harness the strength to get this thing down and possibly even mule it down there by hand, either drag it on the ground or pick it up. I don't know. I got back problems right now, so it's, Probably not the best of ideas, but I see my dinner out there. We gotta take action, let's do it. That actually wasn't too terrible. So by myself, I'm gonna guess this kayak's about 180 pounds. So by myself, I just have to do it one side at a time. Now, can I pick this thing up? That's the real question. I'm gonna kill myself getting down there, but it is possible. Kind of just said I was over it, just drug it down here. 
not the best for the bottom of the hole, but we're in the water now. So I'm gonna grab my fins. I got a pack with fishing gear, a couple poles. Since I'm seeing white bass schooling, I may just target those. But I brought some, some catfish rigs too. We got noodles, but right now, white bass, a couple of those, we'll be good to go. All right, gear for the journey. What do we need to get our dinner? We're gonna be taking a little seven foot medium power. If I was a good boy, I should have packed some spoons and I did. So I'm gonna throw one of these big boys on here, this three quarter ounce slurping spoon. This is gonna be what I'm gonna go after white bass with. The meat necklace. We got a meat necklace, we're gonna throw it at the kayak. I got a cooler full of ice right here. I've got my pedals. We're gonna go light, we're gonna go simple. Okay, let's launch this baby. I'm not really anticipating the graph working given what happened to the kayak about 10 minutes ago, but we're about to find out. Our battery up in here. Got some uh, kind of some loose wires going on. Let's see. This one appears to be negative. That one appears to be positive. Wow, Jiminy Christmas. We're working, baby. Be rough out here. I ain't gonna lie, this is gonna be a treacherous journey. Uh, let's get our pedals in before we. Oh my gosh, we're already ta we're taking waves. We're taking waves. Oh shoot. Well, this is not working out well. Uh, Touch the bottom. Oh my god. Holy it's broken. That ain't good. She done broke off. She done broke off the unit here, boys. Yeah, that ain't that ain't supposed to be like that. Is it possible to navigate with one? All right, let's try it again. Just get me away from the, get me away from the bank. I'll be okay. All right, Crocs off. Graph's working. I see we're in six foot. Let's get it. Let's get it. We got half a pedal. We got to go gingerly on this thing. Captain's vlog. One thruster is down. We're trying to go into the waves. We're getting a half, one half knot at best. Captain needs a little luck here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I have found a floating creature, potential food item. Let's see what we got here. Okay, yeah. Expiration date has come and gone on this guy. That would be uh, a gar. I ain't gonna eat no gar. That ain't happening. Hey, buddy. They're pretty fresh, though. Probably, somebody poked them probably last night. We still have about three hours till the sunset, so I might change tactics and go to a bluegill strategy in the shallows. Well, I got so excited when I saw the white bass schooling on this flat behind me. Rushed to get the kayak down, got it out there, just took a spoon basically, and they were gone. You know, that's the thing about flats. They'll move up on them, feed. There was a little bit of shad up there, then they pushed out. So usually in the evening time and in the morning time, they're up there on the flats feeding. 
So we still got a few hours until that happens. In the meantime, we're gonna go in, get after some bluegills. So I brought all my fly gear like I would be going to Colorado so we can play around with that. And I think what I'm gonna do is wade out in a pocket, try to get out of this wind and just nymph around for some gills. Then I can use those for bait or I can just eat those. We got nothing right now except a bag of pickles and some water. So let's hydrate, let's get our fly gear together. Let's go get some meat. All right guys, we found a cove that's not extremely windy. Ooh, I see some bluegills shooting off right now. I got the meat necklace on hand. We're flied up. We're flied up, ready to go. Got my nymphing rod. I've got a small nymph on it with a little bit of split shot. And we're gonna use that to sort of just drag this around and get some bites. smoked it. There's a gill. It's going on the necklace, buddy. All right, second one. We're at least getting some bait. Starting low on the food chain. All right, boys. See some. See some in the chalos. Oh, it even smells like fish right here. Oh, there's one right there. Come on, baby. Yes, sir. Come to Papa. And that should be plenty for bait. But if I get a big one, he's going in the skillet. Sure you oh there's one that one might have its shoulders no nah, not really i can assure you there was no shortage of alcoholic beverages here at the ray roberts boat ramp there's a decent one we'll throw him on it is absolutely ripping now not good kayak conditions we got to eat. So I have gathered some jugs. We should have plenty of bait with the gills we just caught to bait these lines. I got six ounce weights on here. I don't know if it's going to hold up in the wind. It's blowing straight in the bank. My hope is I'm going to get out on that break and hopefully there's going to be a lot of bait coming in and maybe some catfish that are going to cruise through. I'm going to leave one bluegill in the cooler because if all else fails, I'm gonna at least gonna have a nugget of protein I can munch on. For bluegill, I typically will get three pieces of bait out of each small gill. A big one you can get four or five pieces out of. I always start with a tail and just discard the little finny parts that'll impede a hook set. All right, I'm gonna put this guy back in. That way we got guaranteed food. Bait bag, going in the bait bag. Just getting off the beach is gonna be a task itself. Oh my gosh. Absolutely ripping. All right, let's drop this. Drop the rudder. Here we go, here we go. Oh, yep, yeah. come on. <sighs> Woo. Oh my gosh. I've never tipped my Hobie, but today might be the day. All right, we're out here 20 feet. Just starting to see some marks. Maybe some drum, maybe some catfish. I don't really know. But looks like a good spot to uh, toss a jug. 
So let's get started. All right, two baits on. We'll send it down. All right, that one is actually floating a little bit. Well, it'll eventually hit bottom, that's for sure. Drifting into shore. Bombs away. Wow, we are so much farther than the other one right now. Bombs away. There we go. Okay, number four. Send it. Floating slightly. I don't think it's gonna touch the bottom. It's floating. Floating in 27. I really can't tell if I'm getting a bite or not, but I thought I saw a double tap on this first one. Whew, something is seriously wrong with my, uh, my things here. Oh my God, I lost that one completely. It's gone. Really only have one th thruster now. Son of a dick. I knew something was really off. Well, that sucks fat. Just gonna go up to this jug and just pull on it slightly, see if I see anything. Feel anything. I feel like it's running away from me, but it's probably just the kayak. <sighs> nope, I feel something on there. We got one, boys. Oh my gosh, it's a good one. Oh my gosh, boys, we got dinner. Whoo, barely hooked. So glad I checked that. Oh, mission complete already. We don't even have to wipe bass pole. Oh my gosh. Such a fan of the jugs. Doing a lot of the hard work for you. Toss him over the side. Might as well just throw her line back out. Pro tip, whenever you open up one of your meat necklace uh, deals, always close it back because it'll It'll cause you a mess. There you go, puppy. There we go. That is a delish dinner, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no need to really fish anymore. Because that right there will feed me tonight and tomorrow. However, um, we're going to go check our other lines. So that literally was five five minutes probably and had a fish i set that one that was the uh first jug and then i set the last one i started going up to the first and looking for white bass and that one was already i thought i saw a little little nibble like that but it wasn't very much that's all it took though heck yeah homemade jugs they've been working really well this summer Ooh, baby, we're going to put a little spice on that. We may, we, may, we may golden crispy that bad boy. Don't have enough butter, but we'll figure something out, man. Dag up. So excited, y'all. Oh, hang on a second. We're getting some movement. Feel something. Might have something here. Two 
two kitty cats doubled up I'm talking no time at all these are small so I'll let them go thought I saw a little movement I think this one's got one. Hell, I think they all might have one. We might have breakfast on right here. Oh yeah, there's a there's a bump. It's definitely getting bumped. Yes, sir. Feel him. Feels like it might have a little weight. Oh, it's a double, another double kitty. You guys are small, man. You're twisting up my lines. That's the size that will stick you to. Don't want that. I mean, technically they're eaters, but small. We got big boys. Caught on something. Oh no, I'm caught on my other catfish. Oh, what a mess. That's how you get hooked on stuff right there. I didn't even think about that. Other catfish hanging <laughs> off the side. All right, we'll re-rig that later. But now we're about 200 yards from where it was. None of these have been cleaned so far. So we must be in a decent zone. I can already tell you this one's got something on it. Uh, uh. Feel it fighting. Feels small. And it is. Little guys. Okay, well. Hey, food source. We could eat him. But I like him a little better than that. Winner, winner. Catfish dinner. We got one more though. We're almost there. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, I feel him already. Easy now. Don't you get caught in my other catfish. Oh, it's a good one. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, ladies and gents. It's a fatty cat and we got dinner, baby. We got dinner for a couple days. Oh, no, 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 no. Come here. Oh, this is uh, actually kind of a dangerous situation here. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to film everything. It's not working out well. It's not, it's not working out good at all. sun going down and success has been achieved y'all two big old kitty cats the jug lines were phenomenal I mean within an hour and a lot of that was just me pedaling around with one pedal we had we had a double we had two doubles so that's four and then we had three we had seven catfish we out here stunt on them catfish those are two really good eating blue cats we got extra we got extra we can feast down all good i'm almost thinking that i need to just come out here with the crispy and do a camp and just collect because the catfishing is obviously really good i've never done it out here 
I've, I'm literally just going behind my camper and I've caught plenty in an hour. So no need to chase the white bass. They weren't coming up anyways with the waves. So it worked out beautifully. And my friends, it is time to crack. We've been working hard. We've been grinding to get to this point where we have food secured. Most important thing, it just feels good to know I'm gonna set up right here. I'm gonna set up on my little outdoor kitchen. I'm gonna watch that sunset. We're gonna fire up cast iron. I've got two cast irons. We're gonna make some little okra, do our fish in the skillet. We set, we set ladies and gentlemen. I feel like I'm on an episode of Alone, just the redneck version with a little more accommodations. Awesome y'all, smash that like button, let's get to cooking. Cleaning these catfish, you guys already know the drill. You've been watching this channel for a while. If you haven't, go check out some of my other catfishing videos where I show you how to clean these. I think on this tonight, since I don't have my big cutting board, I'm just gonna do the peel method, kind of trace the skin, peel the skin off, and fillet it right off the ribs and the, the skeleton. The skeleton, that's what you're doing. You're filleting the meat off the skeleton. I'll show you guys the cooking part, but you know what's up on the cleaning. The old wood splitting baton came in handy for dispatching tonight. I always keep that in my truck. I also keep one of these in my truck. A little truck camping pro tip. This is a kind of a, a walking stick and a, a depth checking stick when I'm trout fishing, but it, I picked a cedar tree that had a limb right here and I left that nub so I can reach into my truck and I can pull stuff out. It's like a little grabber. I keep that in the right on the top there she's good to go so you don't when you start getting older you know you don't want to be banging around on your knees getting stuff all the way in the back anyway pro tip for all you middle-aged fishing freaks I apologize for the lighting it's not the best the bugs are really bad right now I'm trying to keep them out of my grill they're just swarming the camper I'm hoping they go away but anyway I don't want to turn on my big lights and turn this into a bug show not out here to eat bugs, I'm here to eat catfish. Always, always, always butter. Always carry that camping. Can't go wrong with it, cooking. I uh, usually do about a quarter stick uh, for the cast iron. And usually I'll get the cast iron pretty hot. I'll turn it on like three quarters of the way high, get it pretty hot. I'll throw the butter in and I'll turn it down to about medium, medium high. And then uh, just depending on you know what I got, I'm gonna go straight Cosmo SPG onto the catfish that is in the cooler right now. I filleted it. <laughs> Fillets are sitting in the cooler, just chilling. I only did. I only cleaned one. I'm gonna let the other one firm up, and I'll clean it tomorrow. Tonight we're probably gonna do four or five minutes each side, and that'll be about it. Uh, you, you don't want to overcook the fish. Um, but I just go by the, when it starts to flake, it's done. When you can take a fork and it's just flaking off and it's tender, it's done. Bugs are terrible. All right, guys, let's cook these dang things. I had to turn the cabin light off. It's just too stinking bad. When I turn my hand lamp on, they're going to swarm me. They're just swarming me. Turn it off, all right. Just trust, I'm cooking catfish right now. I'll give you guys some headlamp action when the skillet's getting hot. We're feeling good right now, actually. Butter going in. Oh yeah, baby. We're, we're uh, inadvertently cooking a few bugs here in the process. You want it brown, but not black blackening. You don't want to blacken your butter. There we go, she's hot, she's ready. We gotta come in half so they'll fit in our skillet. There we go, baby. That's the sound of greatness right there. Yes, sir. There we go. Ooh. Catfish skin is curling. I'm gonna get that okra going here in just a second. All right, fresh okra. Getting that dice. All right, we're gonna throw that in, quarter stick of butter. Oh, she's hot. 
Be real hot. We're gonna need a glove. Quick shot with the light, throwing the ochre in. Wah bam. All right, the okra is, is starting to condense. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my rice to heat it up. I'm gonna put it in there. Put it in there very low. I'm almost just gonna turn it off. Let that rice soak up some of the butter and the juices. Salt, pepper, garlic juices. Here's my headlamp. Whoop. Sorry guys. I'll take my headlamp back. It's cooking. Culinary. Culinary process. No, it's dark guys, but I'm going to plate this up and we're gonna take it inside. This is going to be amazing. Okay boys, it's cooling down in here. I am going to shut this off so you guys can hear. Quietness. This is actually how I'm going to eat this. Over the bed of rice with the okra, the fillets, they look phenomenal. Now here's a pro move. Let me get my dinner table set up. That's how, that's how official this is. We gotta get the dinner table set up. All right, dinner table set up. Now here's an elite move. Elite move. This is a spicy mesquite honey. I got it at Bucky's. All right, here's what we're going to do. Drizzle over. That's going to be that sauce. It's going to hit the fish with a little sweetness and some spice. Also soak in with the rice. Pair it with our Dallas Blonde. Wah bam Pair it with a spork. All right, this might as well be an episode of elite camp dinners because that's what this is catfish looks cooked perfectly my eight inch cast iron that i carry around truck camping it's flawless it's seasoned so well zero stick boys I'm about to do work here oh my gosh with a spork eating it with a spork it's so tender Get the heck out of here. Oh my gosh. This is one of the best catfish dishes I've ever cooked in my life. The catfish, oh, it doesn't get fresher. It's falling apart. This is like four or five minutes each side. That okra, adding in a little something with the rice. The rice soaking in this with the butter and the other spices. Oh, I know you guys didn't see me pick the okra, but I literally just grabbed it right before I hopped in the truck to head up here. It's so fresh. Fun fact, I bought this to put into my uh, mushroom tea to give it some sweetness. I had no idea it was spicy. Now I'm reading it. It says fiery, sweet mesquite. And that totally makes sense, but it is delicious on this fish. So salt, salt, pepper, garlic on here. A little bit of lemon would set this thing off into the heavens. I am so impressed. I'm going to say top three best fish dishes I've ever cooked in my life. And it always tastes better at camp, right? But there is, there's a dynamic to this that is quite incredible. I wish all of you could taste this right now. Blue catfish, don't cut them out. And I am done for the day. I, my belly's full. I will see you guys early in the morning for hopefully some white bass schooling and we get some more protein to go into our body and make it this 24 hours uh, successful day. I'll see you guys manana. Northeast wind five to 10 miles an hour.
Tuesday, sunny. Highs in the mid-90s. North winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Hey, guys. Oh, you see any white bass schooling out there? No? Yeah, wind's blowing about 30. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Uh. Well, it was a good night's sleep in the wagon, y'all. And I came outside this morning. I still have not seen any white bass coming up to the top. And quite honestly, I'm not motivated to get out there and chase them. I've still got a full belly from last night, believe it or not. Stuff, stuffed myself. Uh, so I think I can basically just ride this thing out. Uh, plus, getting out there in the kayak right now, trying to battle around with this. So if you guys have never seen one of these, this is the Hobie, uh, Hobie Drive system, I think is what it's called. So it works like this, and it works really well when you have both the fins, but I lost a fin. And you guys see the waves out there. There's nothing blocking the waves for like 20 miles on this lake right now. So it's very rough. The big decision we're going to have to make today, this beautiful morning, is do I drag the kayak back up the hill to get it onto my truck or do I try to like drift it? down to the next cove where it would be easier but then again I'm dealing with the pedal things to get a little wonky plus I'm gonna have to walk all the way back yeah I'm kind of just avoiding that whole thing because that's that's the hill right there and uh, I haven't had any coffee you know no nutrient I'm, I'm not warmed up I'm reorganizing the camper I'm gonna clean it up get things dialed for Colorado um, and I got to reorganize tackle and everything things got crazy last night so I'm gonna hold off on that but that's gonna be interesting stay tuned good morning oh you're pretty where's your little phone at you got a phone out here somewhere I'm sure all right fishing freaks I have Returned from my morning walk and I found three things of interest Number one We've got a spot that is way easier to get the kayak up than uh, This whole situation back here. So that was a great find. I also found a deer that was bedded down Didn't care. I didn't have a care in the world that I was there Really cool. Nice park deer beautiful and then I found a raccoon that at the time when I found it was eating a diaper and that was gross. As a person that has eaten a raccoon before, I was disgusted. Just know that raccoons, uh, especially park raccoons, not a good food source. So I spent the last hour and a half packing up the camper, making sure everything's functioning right, we're good to go there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this paddle. I'm gonna paddle the kayak around, park it in a cove where I can load it easier. And now we're all loosened up, ready to go. Wind is just still rocking right into this bank. Okay, let's see if we can paddle. Oh, shoot. Ugh. See if we can paddle our way over here. Go down the rudder. So we've got a little movement. Oh yeah. We got this. Alright, this looks decent. Look at this pond weed. Pond weed growing around the bank. Bass love that. All right. Sorry, Hope. You're going to get a few scratches. Now we're on grass. There we go. All right. 
do the dipsy do for real. Uh, this is where things get pretty spicy. So I'm gonna have to somehow get that on top of the truck. We are secure. If you guys are wondering what straps I use, so I actually use the Rhino rack, is what I got on this truck. I can, it's a flat platform, I can put anything. But I added some cleats, these cleats right here, and then also some rings. So those rings you can really do anything with, and you know, obviously they take ratchet straps, but the cleats, I've got the uh, Rhino rack brand straps that have loops on the end so i can put those on there as well and they're, they're really nice because they don't they don't slide off they don't go anywhere and i've just got three straps on the yak so i've got two on the back keep it stable one over the front it just holds the whole thing in place and uh, make sure it won't slide back and that's how we do it all right fishing freaks it is 11:30, so we have basically made it the 24 hours packed up ready to go only thing i got to do now is just clean the the tanks and all that gross stuff that i'm not going to show you uh, a little over a week away we are going to be heading out to colorado going to be doing a ton of fishing a lot of camping i know you guys want to stay tuned for that so subscribe here to the channel smash that like button for getting it done here in the great outdoors and i'll see you on the next great adventure Thank you.